Why the bathrobe and why sitting on the floor? Because these things are actually my default for feeling safe. The first thing I ever do, and Jose does the same thing too, when we get home, we both rip off our clothes, not, not down to nakedness, but we both just immediately, we're both in a hurry, I, he does his thing and I do mine, to just, before we even greet the dogs to get off the jewelry, I hate wearing jewelry, and to, uh, to just get comfort, comfortable, right? And that's what this video is about, it's about, feeling safe and it's random thoughts because I had so many going through my mind this morning because um, the other day actually what came back to my mind this morning that triggered the whole thing because my mind works by association was um, the other day when I was at a, a little meeting it's like a little prayer meeting group you know we, we kind of meet in a group and everything well um, our friend, who also happens to be the pastor, he is very good at playing the piano. I mean, it just rolls out of him. He does it by ear. And um, then he's got this deep English voice. Yeah, not deep, it's just a comforting English voice. He's got, he grew up, he's Malaysian, but he grew up in, the, in um, England somewhat, I think. Anyway, anyway, that's off point, but, um, but the point is, is that he sang this song, well, he kind of led us in this song that is so, it always just whew, brings the comfort, brings the comfort. And it's his particular voice because it's like the, how you would want your dad, the best dad in the world to, to, um, just the warmth you know what I mean anyway it's not about him this is not about him this is about things that cause comfort things that cause safety things that make you feel secure and um, anyway I wish that you could hear him sing this song because because it immediately evokes I'm able immediately to experience the father's love with this song, right? When, when he kind of sings it, but I'm gonna sing it just so that you can get a taste of it, but I wish it was a man's voice with an English accent. And um, anyway, the point is this song is true. And this song, coming back to my mind this morning, led to a bunch of other random thoughts about feeling safe. So, it goes. <clears throat> there is none like you. No one else can touch my heart like you do. I could search for all eternity long and find there is none like you. Your mercy... Wait, how does it go? Mercy flows like a river wide. Healing comes from your hands. Suffering children are safe in your arms. There is none like you. There is none like you. No one else can touch my heart like you do. I could search for all eternity long and find there is none like you. The part that always grabs my heart is the part about your mercy flows like a river wide and healing comes from your hands, but this, this line. Suffering children are safe in your arms. That line gets me every time because it's just like, um, I don't know, you know, don't you wish that you could just give this to every single person out there that every because every person has like a child in them 
right? We all, whether you're little or big, but there are so many suffering children right now. So many. I'm talking about literal children. And that is heart-wrenching enough. But then when you add on to it, like sometimes I think, remember this is random thoughts. That's what this is the title. So, so um, I just let my thoughts go and you can have them. But like sometimes I think even Hitler, I mean the worst person you could think of was once an infant, was once a baby, right? Innocent, innocent. You know, and then I guess it was things done to him or something. Like, even the worst serial killer was once an innocent little baby. And suffering children, there's nothing worse. Suffering, suffering animals comes close to it, but oh my goodness. And like, another random thought I had this morning was was um, when I was a teenager, there was this um, there was this Coke commercial, and there was a song that went with the Coke commercial, and it was, um, but it just is my heart, and it's um, <clears throat> I'd like to teach the world to sing in perfect harmony. I'd like to hold it in my arms and keep it company. And, you know, I think that sometimes feeling helpless to help others, we harden ourselves, but we can't go there. And we've got to just continue to pray that somehow the love of God will break through and touch every person, child or adult, the children and the adult, touch everybody deeply. And <clears throat> I was remembering this morning my friend and what happened to her when she was a little girl. And it's a big long story and she even talked about it early on in my YouTube channel several years ago. She had four parts to her story because her story was so big. But um, one little section from her story that I always remember is she was, when she was very, very little, I th well, she was eight years old, and she had a very abusive stepdad. And the stepdad used to abuse her mother and really, really, and even keep them hostage, you know, it was really, really extreme. But this particular day, she was eight years old, and she was in her room, and all of a sudden her stepfather started to abuse her mother, and and just for, so bad, so bad, so bad, and then, I don't know, they left and left this little eight-year-old alone in the dark on Halloween. And they, he, maybe he took her out to do something. I don't know what, but, but I mean the mom, but the little eight-year-old, my friend, was left all by herself in her room. She just sat there. She told me that she sat there on the edge of her bed petrified just she couldn't even move a muscle because she was so scared and it was dark and and then all of a sudden Jesus came into the room this is true this is true Jesus came into the room because he cares you know and he wrapped his arms around her and she fell asleep and she had heard about Jesus. She had gone to Sunday school when she was very, very little. And so she had heard about Jesus, but that she only had a very, very slight reference. Like she learned the song, Jesus loves me, this I know, or something like that. But that was enough. And he came into this little child and he wrapped his arms around her and comforted her. Comforted her. 
and she fell asleep. And that stuck with her throughout her childhood until through uh, so much more happened to her bad, but, but she always came back to that. <clears throat> and you see, that's what I want. I want every single person in the whole world. Actually, that's why I made this YouTube channel. I, you know, it's my little effort. It's all I can do. I want every person to feel comfort. I want every single person in the whole world to know that they're loved, to know that, that, that they can have God break through to them. And that's why I made this. And that's the feeling of security that I want everybody to have. And so, um, and so like, that's why I do, I do the crazy things like eat bugs or eat hot peppers or whatever to try to get people to look so that they might see something that I, else that I've put about how God loves them and they could somehow take hope and comfort and get secure in His love. <clears throat> so, I had, so, I had so many random thoughts and they're all jumbled together, but I hope it somehow makes sense. But I just want to end this time of random jumbled up thoughts with a little prayer that if you don't know how to find secure, a secure place of comfort, and you long for God's love to break through to you as, as his love broke through to my eight-year-old friend, Maria, when she was eight. If you want that same kind of experience, I just ask, I just, I'm going to pray a little prayer and just, you know what? It takes your invitation. God is a gentleman. He never barges his way in. But if you just give him a little foothold, he'll push that door open wide. And so if you just want that same kind of comfort in your life as I've experienced, experienced in mine, and my friend, my friend Maria experienced in hers, then just agree with this prayer and even even participate. So dear God, so many, 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 many hurting people out there. Oh wait, I'm going to interrupt myself. I remembered something else I wanted to say. It's not just fearful things like earthquakes or big things. It is, this is, Teddy, stop it. This was also part of my random thoughts that I had this morning. And that was that, um, that sometimes the scariest things are the smallest things or the things inside of our minds. They're not the things like the, the person out there, stop it. The person out there with the gun or the knife, they're the things that haunt you in your own mind, you know what I mean? That can be the scariest thing. And for example, like, what still affects me? <laughs> My scary things? Like when I all of a sudden fall backwards into like attacking my face because I've always had a horrible habit of, of anytime there's a little bump on my face just to tear at it, right? And then of course it leaves marks and scars that I have to cover up with tediously with makeup. And then when I, I also, just different things like I attack my hair when I don't see something that I like and I attack it until finally I'm almost bald and then then I don't want anybody to see me, right? And that is one of the scariest things for me. And then I just fall back and say, God have mercy on me, you know? And somehow he's able to comfort me and I even say, God, fix my face, fix my hair. And he shows me that he loves me just as I am. But it's the small things. It's, there's lots and lots of things that make us fearful, that make us want to hide from everybody out there, right? So I just wanted to add that part in, that, that this is for every kind of fear, every kind of insecurity. Lord, I just ask, 
that your love, you know my friends out there, the ones that I just long just to throw my arms around, even though I've never even met them. Dear God, but you know them. And I ask you to comfort them in the deep way that you've comforted me. And I ask that you would just reveal yourself to them and show them that you love them at this moment, just as they are. And every moment can be new when they turn to you, no matter how bad they they feel, no matter how scared they are, if they just say your name, your all-powerful name, and just say, Jesus, help me. Jesus, you love me. Help me, God. Come into my heart. Show me your love. God, I ask you, I ask you to do that for my friends out there. I ask you to draw them to yourself. Open up their eyes to see you. Open up their ears to hear you and it, let them experience your arms of love around them. Even in the biggest or tiniest little whisper, even in the biggest way or the smallest way, that they would know that you care, that you have hope. Because of you, there's hope. Thank you, God. Make us all secure and safe. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Okay. Bye.